Justin Sun has found the next thing that he's going to copy, and it is El Salvador. <laughs> and he's talking about crypto at the nation state level, inspired by Bitcoin as legal tender in El Salvador. I'm a Justin. I'm a Justin Sun fan. He is a contentious fella. He's always sort of you know stirring up controversy around himself, and always trying to sort of get himself into the conversation. He has a thick skin. He's a smart guy. And our colleague, Mujia Shen, talked to him about his grand plans. He's leaving Tron. Uh, the Tron Foundation is being dissolved. He's going to leave the governance of the Tron blockchain to, uh, to Tron holders and other, uh, other stakeholders. And he's going to become an ambassador from the country of Grenada to the World Trade Organization, which is some sort of weird signal about where we are in crypto right now. And I don't know what it is. I think we go a lot of ways with this conversation. Justin Sun remains an interesting character in the crypto space. Uh, I'm going to throw it straight to Will, actually, because I, I don't know. What are, your, what are your thoughts? When you see this, wh what are you thinking? What are you thinking about this? Just, let's put a big smile on my face this morning when I saw that headline. That's, that's what I'll say right off the bat. Uh, I will also say that if he's dissolving the Tron Foundation, he says he's leaving the uh, ecosystem. It doesn't really make sense because he's still a mega whale in terms of Tron and it's a proof of stake system. And we've seen in the past that he's been able to go in and change things on changed on chain just by like the way his tokens kind of vote. Uh, if you remember like the hive debacle from like two years ago, Brady Dale, some awesome articles on Coindesk, you can go back and read those. Justin soon is like, he gets in there, he gets into the politics of uh, the Toronto blockchain quite a bit. And I don't see him kind of moving on from that maybe for like six months, kind of this political stunt and do that. Uh, but that's kind of an aside from, from the main story. It's interesting to see someone of his figure jumping into like the, the political side of things. And it makes sense with when you're looking at some of the other players who have been getting into like uh, the larger political ecosystem. Uh, I, this might be kind of too far off to the side, but SBF and FTX have just moved to uh, the Bahamas, right? And and they move there just because it's a like it's easier to do things there. There's like more legal sanctions. As these like small Caribbean nations, you can kind of operate close to the U.S. but outside the border, so you can kind of operate your own business however you want. This seems to be like a similar play in the stance that he's going to a small Caribbean country and going to be working with them on crypto adoption. I think that is going to be like a continued storyline we see with a few other players going forward. Did I see it with Justin soon? No, I didn't. So that's why his headline was fantastic. Uh, Naomi, I'll throw it up to you. Yeah, I um, I have a lot of takes on this. I'm going to take a step back from the Justin hating because I actually like Justin. I think he's a very interesting entrepreneur. Um, contentious, obviously, but very interesting. And I just want to point out, I, I mean, we could, we could dig into that, but I'm, I'm so <laughs> sick of that smear just being put, like, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Everything in crypto is literally open source code. Like you can copy and paste whatever you want, but let's actually look at what he said because he's 100% correct here. And I think that like he's on the money right now. He says, we cannot fully rely on the US market. There are nearly 8 billion people in the world and the US only has 300 million people. The US market should not decide on crypto with more, the, with more than 7 billion people left in the rest of the world. He's absolutely right. We've just gotten through all these congressional hearings where US politicians are acting like they completely control crypto all over the world and let's face it they do because they have controlling interests in all of these you know multinational organizations you know that actually get to decide things decide things like the travel rule and you know these are just guidelines but you, the US has the ability to sanction any country that doesn't approve of whatever their policies are you have you know the whole bitmex scenario where they were literally blocking the ip address of US customers you had the the people who control bitmex not even living in the US the company wasn't registered in the US and yet they were able to arrest people involved with this because it didn't apply with US law. I am so sick of the US controlling crypto around the world and I think that it's a smart play to start working on these smaller countries. Get some like rallying support from places that maybe have interests outside of the, the US. Like I think that it's very interesting what El Salvador is doing right now. They're in a very unique position because they are dollarized. Since 2001 they have used the US dollar in their economy rather than the Cologne and and uh, because of that, they haven't had a central bank controlling their money supply. They haven't uh, you know, had to give up any power by embracing Bitcoin. It's a lot more difficult for a government to embrace Bitcoin if it means that there might be a chance this thing could undermine the purchase.
purchasing power of their sovereign currency. So I think that looking at other countries that are also dollarized, that don't have their own central bank is a very interesting play. I hope that's the direction he's going in, not just saying, oh, let's uh, Latin America in general, like, let's focus on the places that are dollarized. Uh, but I absolutely think that if we can get a bunch of countries on board and just get this, you know, support brewing, that's a very interesting play to me because the US right now is just dictating terms for the whole world and it's absolutely ridiculous and needs to stop. But I'll throw to you, Jen. Had Justin Sun becoming a diplomat wasn't on my 2021 bingo card, <laughs> but it also put a smile no. on my face this morning. To the copy and paste comment though, Will, I think if you if you look at most successful businesses, I don't think you can find one that hasn't copied something from another one. Okay, so, but that's, it's a little different I, when it comes to Tron. Like it's okay, yeah, well you're known right. that he steals stuff from <laughs> Geth. It's the same. Binance well, is well the two. Well you know, it's well talked about. It's well talked about. There are a lot of what things that mean? are What's well talked thing? about because well there are, there's a lot of parroting in the crypto space. A lot of people who like to think that they've looked into the details or something and all they've done is read a headline and then they go and p perpetuate some narrative about someone and smear their character. I, I'm not here to demonize successful truth in every people. Smear campaign. Absolutely. There's a little truth, but I just wish people understood the nuance of that truth and weren't just like parroting headlines, which they always do. And it's just, you know, endemic in the crypto Twitter population. It's uh, this crazy population. I, I anyway, the Jen, sorry, I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, yeah. Jen, go ahead. We'll just argue no, more. I actually, I, I was gonna, I was gonna take a long-winded path to get to this question, but I'm gonna get straight to it. Will maybe just talk us through, like a quick notes on the controversy surrounding Justin Sun, because we haven't talked about that and maybe give everyone some context. Where should we begin? I think Zach can, can provide some insights as well since his, his time as editor here at Coindesk. Uh, I think that the thing that comes to mind is, yes, a lot of the Tron software has been pulled from different projects and that's fine to a degree. But the thing that pisses people off in the crypto ecosystem is when that software, which was intended for like a decentralized purpose, where anyone can use it, anyone can look at the code, anyone can run it, and there's no figurehead, it was changed so that he would be the only one who could control it. And he was the one who was a beneficiary from all of it. So again, looking back at that Hive story from 2020, 2019, there was a project built on the Tron blockchain and they wanted, they didn't want to be involved with the Tron ecosystem or they didn't want to be involved with Justin Sun. And he came in and basically rolled everything back and changed the protocol. And there was a huge, like pretty interesting blockchain war going back and forth just just because he was trying to control it and continue to have that project on his chain when an entire right, this is this parody hey, i gotta jump in it. will i gotta jump in because we can't spread fud on this show it's about getting to the fact on this show and giving people information so they can pass through all the weeds that's <laughs> not entirely like true how it happened that's definitely a narrative that people push but if you actually talk to like the founder of hype for example a great interview where we dive into the details it wasn't initiated by justin sun what happened was when the handover from ned scott went over to to Justin, everyone got concerned. The ecosystem freaked out and they made a preemptive move to block Justin's son from using any of his state's portion. So the idea was that when Steemit was around, there was a, a big portion of Steemit tokens and it was just kind of this like unwritten rule that, you know, uh, Ned Scott was never going to use them for staking, never going to use this controlling share to actually make decisions on the network. Now, anyway, there was this handover to Justin and everyone freaked out and said, is he or isn't he? He actually never made any move to control the network, right? off the bat. But I also understand the Hive community's concern, right? So they preemptively blocked him. This led to a backlash where he went behind closed doors. We don't know what was said behind the closed doors, but he talked to, you know, leaders of exchanges said like, we've just pushed this new code. Can you please make these changes? He ba basically like unlocked his stake um, and, uh, and made these changes. And then the community freaked out again. So it was like this back and forth, but I have to reiterate that it wasn't Justin Sun who, who initiated this. It was the Hive community. And again, I understand where they're coming from because they're worried about centralization, but he didn't actually make any play off the bat to control anything. And I think he gets smeared a lot in that whole uh, debacle there. So just wanted to make that, that clear, but I think we're changing topics now and uh, going to a break. No. Oh, Zach reaction. Spicy. Sorry, Zach, you react. 
Let's look, let's look at this script. Zach, react. Zach reaction. Wow, that's a new one. Um, that's some spicy that. stuff, guys. It's wow, fine. I I get uncomfortable when mommy and daddy are fighting, and it makes me nervous. But um, it was good to watch, and um, there's a lot of unpack there. So, hey, I hope someone got a a screen grab of Naomi waiting to to jump in on Will's point because that was the perfect Wait, it's like it's just teaming it's, it's like ah, it. please it. i gotta i gotta talk let me say something right now i'm gonna sing good, don't though. make me sing it's gonna be right. it's gonna be interesting to see if you know if justin's on in the in the in the diplomatic arena like jen said if he remains contentious and uh potentially controversial within the diplomatic arena or if he is indeed a uh a force for good in spreading some of these technologies to some of these countries in latin america that's what i'm gonna be watching 